Hi everyone and happy Indigenous Peoples Day. Um, I found this book at our local library and it's beautiful so I just wanted to share it with all of my friends today. Um, Fort Vancouver Library available to check out. A Land of Books, Dreams of Young Mexica Word Painters by Duncan Tonatu. Long before the Europeans arrived in the Americas, mighty civilizations prospered. Storytelling thrived among the Mexica, also known as the Aztec, and their Mesoamerican neighbors, who painted intricately crafted books. In this story, a young girl explains to her brother how their parents make a moshtin, books that gather Mexica knowledge, culture, and history. One day, she explains they too will join their parents painting words to share with their people and pass down to their future generations. I want to say here too that I'm still learning how to pronounce words in Nahuatl and I am also still learning the language. There's a really awesome glossary here in the back with pronunciation that I might flip to during the story. A Land of Books, Dreams of Young Mexica Word Painters by Duncan Tonatu. To Howard, a friend and collaborator. Thank you for all your support. Our world, my brother, is an Amoshtlapan. In the jungles where the jaguar dwells, the Xontaltin make books. In the mountains, the Mixteca, the cloud people, make them as well. So do others on the coast and in the forests. And we, the mighty Mexica, who dwell in the valley of volcanoes, make books too. Our parents are the Tlalcuilcuilcue, or the Tlalcuilcue. Let's look that up. Oh. Taltolki, Tal Taltoke. Our parents are the Taltol. Oh no, that's not the word I'm looking for. Aha, Talkiloque. Aha, our parents, the pearl, the plural of Talkilo, which can be translated as scribe or painter of words, painter of books. Talkiloque. Our parents are the Talquiloque, painters of words. The emotion they make tell the stories of our gods, our history, our people. They work with others at the Amoshkali, the house of books. With the passing of time, their names will be lost, like the smoke of the incense then the, when the wind blows. But their spirits shall remain. The words they paint will be sung by countless generations to come. One day, my brother, we will be painters of words too. The emotion our parents make are long strips of paper with multiple page folds. On each end, they have covers made with wood. Our parents decorate the covers with the hides of jaguars, feathers, and precious stones. The books expand out. That is how the priests display them at the temple. They can also be folded down and stored easily at the Amoshkali. Our parents make books with the Amadl paper. I helped them make it and now you can too. First, we soak the bark of the amacuatl tree in water with limestone. We boil the mixture and smash it into a pulp. We then press the pulp into thin sheets to dry. Look at how colorful the amoshtin are. Our parents obtain the dyes to paint from plants, animals, and rocks. The most important paints are black and red. They are sacred colors that the Tlaculoque use the most. 
To make black paint, we mix ashes with gum and water. And to make red, we collect the cochineal insects that live on the nopali. We dry the bugs, crush them, and boil the red color they make with clay and water. Father paints on the amado, but he also paints on walls when he decorates the temples. And he chisels words in stone when he carves images. Our grandparents taught him these arts, and in time, our parents will teach us. I love that they're eating tortillas here with their mama. But our parents also learned at the Kalmekak school. I'm gonna check the pronunciation of that word. Kalmekak. Our parents also learned at the Kalmekak school. We will study there too. We will take classes alongside young nobles and warriors. Father says a painter of words needs to know religion, astronomy, warfare, and history, among other subjects. Tlakulokului need to know a great deal to express knowledge with paint. Yes, a lot of times these Nahuatl words are tough to pronounce. Not everyone can read the words our parents paint though. Only noblemen, priests, and wise elders have access to the Amoshtin and have been taught how to interpret them. They understand the colors and the layout of the pages. They know why people sometimes look bigger than the pyramids in the books. Those that cannot read the drawings may think they are strange, but everything in an Amoshtli is painted as it is for a reason. Tomorrow at the flower festival, the books our family has painted will be sung by a reader. That is when the Masho Masawali, a villager, has a chance to hear the words and admire the images. Tonight when we sleep, my brother, let us dream of the Amoshtin. Let's dream of how in the beginning the universe was formless, but out of that darkness came the Lord of what is near and far, who gave birth to the four main gods, one in the north, one in the east, one in the south, and one in the west. He tasked these four Tetzcalopo, Tetzcalipoca with the creation of the world and mankind. Ooh, let's dream of the great migration. Long ago, our ancestors left Aslan, the island where they lived. After the god Blue Hummingbird spoke to them, he told them to search for an eagle atop a prickly nopali. After many years of pilgrimage, our ancestors saw the sign and settled on the shores of the Tetzcoco Lake. There they flourished. They built the great city of Tenochtitlan and our powerful empire. Let's dream about the great Tlatopue and how these leaders governed. The books show how the enemies they defeated and who they wed to create alliances. Dream of the Amoshtin that are maps to define territories and the books that track tributes like shields, helmets, boxes of seeds, honey, and precious feathers that the people we have conquered must send to our empire. Let us dream of a tonala mill. Ooh, I'm gonna check pronunciation. Let us dream of a tonala mill. Tonala mato. Oh, a calendar used for divination. Tonala mato. Let's dream of a tonala mato. They are the books that keep the count of days. Today is crocodile. Tomorrow will be wind. Each week is 13 days long and is governed by a different god, like Tonatua, god of the sun, Talak, 
God of the Rain. Wise elders interpret the calendar books to predict which days are favorable for important events like weddings, planting corn, or even launching attacks. And let's dream of the emotion about our sisters, the plants, and what illnesses they cure. Or about the movements of the moon and the stars, or the great battles and warriors. Dream now, my brother, of all the words, gods, people, animals, plants, and places we will one day paint. Wake up, my brother, the day is here. We will soon leave for the plaza to attend the flower festival. Look at the emotionally, see the colors, hear the performers sing the words our family painted. Listen to the drums, shells and rattles play while the words are sung. Watch the warriors dance as the emotionally is read. Smell the smoke of the aromatic copali as it blows in the wind. May our world always be in a moshlapan, a land of books. And then here's that awesome glossary with the pronunciation. And then some notes by the author, which are really awesome um, about the codices. An image from Codex. Mayer. Oh, and here's a really great image. Unfolded before 1521, measures approximately 160 inches by seven inches tall. The Merchant's Book of Days, Merchant's Almanac. and his bibliography and where you can see some reproductions of the codices. Cool. Anyway, I do think this is a really awesome book. Beautiful story, amazing art. Um, and yeah, just thanks for listening and thanks for your time and nifty facts. Have a good day, everyone.